I'm here at RAF Chedworth today in Gloucestershire. Um, currently walking around um, what was the the WAF site, the Women's Auxiliary Air Force site um, of accommodation. Uh, not much um, is left today, just like many of the other um, military sites that were put up during the war. A lot of the accommodation blocks were very ephemeral, very temporary, uh, wooden framed, clad with corrugated iron, um, corrugated asbestos sheeting or wood. Um, but what is left um, are some of the more the infrastructure buildings. So here we have the um, ablutions um, for this camp. So this would have been uh, bathhouse, showers and toilet block, uh, all in remarkable condition still. Um, I'm trying new things on the channel. Um, so I've, I've got my phone out at the moment just to record audio because audio from the 360 camera itself is, is pretty terrible. Um, hopefully in the future I'll maybe go for a lapel mic if, um, if, if these commentaries uh, work out. So yeah, on the left, big um, tall structure, that's the water tower. Um, so the water tank would, would have been, and probably still is, up at the top of, um, at the top of that tower. Um, on the right, I believe, is the toilet block, and on the left is the shower and baths. Um, so we'll have a look in the in the bathroom first. Um, yeah, we have I think three small bathrooms here at this on this this left end. Um, you can see the a lot of the pipe work remains, um, especially in the in the far corner there. We've got what would have been the hot and cold water in. Um, got a window. Um, also remains of the electrical cabling, so that have been been quite well lit as well. Um, with electrics in each one. And the colour scheme of yeah, dark green, dark green lower with a, a cream upper. And I'm not quite sure what this um, this large room would have been in the middle. Um, perhaps this, this would have been um, a changing area maybe with some sinks. Uh, there's a drain in the middle of the floor there. Um, some doors. Uh, you can see the, the door frames here. Uh, perhaps into, into shower cubicles. Um, that would have been these smaller uh, these smaller cubicles in here. Um, all the glass has, has been removed, broken, fallen out of the windows, um, but the frames, frames still exist. Um, all, the, all the door frames, um, nice, nice brown paint, um, cement render on the walls. These will, these will likely to be to be shower cubicles. See some some water fittings, some pipe fittings on the on the wall, and um, and yeah, same with the with the render, maybe for some sort of water resistance. And um, so that's the that's the bathhouse. Uh, we'll go across the road here into the um, into the toilet block and have a look. Okay, we're starting off with a with a lobby, and then into the to the main block itself. Um, pretty sure these were the, the toilet cubicles. Um, you can see the, the ghost marks over the walls where the cubicles would have been. That's one, two, three, four, five, and that's so ten. Ten toilet um, cubicles in this in this block uh, with some of the, some of the plumbing and the, the sewage pipes still on the floor. This this main room here with some some electrical fittings. You can actually see in the ceiling, if I lift you up, we've got the, um, the, the exposed electrical wires as well as a, a light bulb fitting and some ceramic insulators. Um, it's probably that, that sinks would have been here. Um, we've got the, the central drain, drainage channel, probably with a bank of sinks on either side, um, just for, for general, general washing up. And, and then in here with you know, the electric cable still windows, but no, no sign of plumbing. So whether this was a a, a drying room, a laundry, um, I'm not not quite sure. And same with this, same with this room, no sign of any plumbing work. Um, still got the got the electrics. Uh, very little sign of vandalism around this around this site, which is nice. It's far enough away, I think, from towns and um, and any large villages for for people to come up and, and just just cause harm. 
nature is, is very much taking over, uh, taking over the site. Uh, before leave the bathhouse, I'll, we'll have a look. There is a um, the, the boiler room is, is still there with the boiler and some of the pipe work intact. So we'll we'll have a look in there um, before moving on. And yeah, here we have the the boiler house, um, still with the, the steel boiler um, with the, the insulated pipe work insulating around the the boiler itself. Um, the the water pipes coming down from the from the water tower. That's a, that's um, that's uh, above us now. Um, yeah, just a just a large large room, probably as I say with the with the water tank still still up there. So yeah, that's the evolution block. We'll move move across the site and have a look at, at some of the other features. So the site's in woodland today but actually it was it was in woodland uh, back in 41 when it was when it was opened and this this was very much a tactic um, for essentially dispersing the living accommodation across these sites the airfield itself would have would have been a major target um, but if we could if, you know if, if we could have hide hide the um, the accommodation the chances of of preserving life and preventing a lot of casualties would have would have been increased so sites like this were, were very common across across the UK um, and this, this would have been, been known as a, as a dispersed accommodation site uh, the main operation part of the airfield probably being um, maybe six, six to eight hundred metres away from here um, so we are right out at one, one corner of the site and it, you know and it is littered with with lots of detritus from demolition um, lots of lots of concrete lots of red brick lots of walls as well as other rubbish ceramic um, ceramic ware and glass and so on. So in front of us now is a um, is a is a typical blast shelter that you you find in um, in many RAF airfields. Relatively cheap and quick to produce, um, and and generally very effective, I think. So while they they didn't have a roof, they were designed to protect against blast and shrapnel damage from from bombs nearby. Um, no air raid shelter was really designed to to take a direct hit. Uh, you can see the unusual. Um, a regular layout and that would have been to essentially break up any any blast wave um, that, that likes to travel likes to travel in a straight line so if you can break it up essentially you, you start a greater chance of well, protecting the occupants um, and the walls are probably only about five feet high uh, which means if you're in this in this shelter you would be you'd be crouching down um, not very comfortable certainly in the middle of winter um, on a wet, wet British night, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been terribly comfortable. But it was, it was here to, to, to protect your life. Um, so I'm sure there weren't, weren't too many complaints if the airfield came under attack. So as well as the, as, as well as the, the red brick walls, they were primarily to hold back the earth banks. It was the, it was the earth and stone around the outside that would have offered the greatest protection um, against, against any, any bomb damage. Um, as we, we move across the site, um, some other other remains. This little building here, I'm not not 100% sure what it is, but I, I think it was probably some sort of cook house um, or kitchen. Uh, the the dining room itself would have been would have been temporary, would, would have been timber framed, corrugated iron most likely, um, most likely innocent hut. Um, but the kitchen itself would have been uh, would have been a little bit more permanent. Um, and this, you know, very 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 cheap and quick quick building to put up um, I see some some concrete render on the outside but it's it's just it's just a single skin red brick uh, wouldn't have, wouldn't have been great for for structure or integrity but it was um, it, it was all they had at the time to be put up quickly quickly and cheaply as I, as I move about side I'm, I'm walking on on the concrete tracks that are that are really everywhere um, betraying the, the layout of the site but I'm, I'm gonna break away from from one of these and head over to do you know a nice feature and um, just to finish off this video uh, on the right here i'm not not quite sure what this what this structure would have been um, I, i'm pretty confident it wasn't a building um, the walls seem capped off with the with the red brick so perhaps a perhaps a water tank um, or or perhaps even a, a, a little blast wall around some other some other structure it may have been maybe a fuel tank water tank um, it could have, could have been the um, 
you know, perhaps some, some power plant or something, um, just to facilitate the facilitate the site. Uh, and you, yeah, you, you may be able to see it in, in the distance. Um, we have some some concrete foundations from one of these temporary buildings um, that we have, so we can see the, the concrete plinth. Um, I'm just just walking on now, and this would this this would most likely have been been one of those accommodation blocks, um, maybe for maybe for sixteen, maybe for more um, of the women that were working here. Um, timber laid around the outside, and then then most likely in this and hut would have been placed on top of it. Um, and these are these are just everywhere around the site. So yeah, finally coming up to the um, the, the second type of air raid shelter. And this is a Stanton shelter. Um, Manufactured by the Stanton Company, who I believe did um, a lot of steel work, so they they prefabricated um, precast concrete uh, sections for air raid shelters. So if we come down into the entrance with the the, the red brick blast wall, um, we can see yeah. So there, there are bolts holding it together, and we can we can see the pre precast panels, which continue inside. So we have these these sort of wheel bone type uh, panels. Um, that, that arch up, meet in the middle, and are just held together with, with cement, which, which meant ultimately the shelter could be as long or short as needed, um, depending on how many how many inhabitants you needed to um, to protect. And then at the end, yeah, the the big open space was the um, emergency escape hatch. So if for whatever reason the the main entrance became blocked, then the occupants could leave leave through the hatch. Um, slightly more comfortable than the blast shelter, especially in those winter months, with benches would have would have likely been provided along the inside so everybody could have sat together. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure it could have got quite quite cozy. So I'll, I'll just finish off by, by going around to the, the far side of the shelter. And we can see the a little bit more about the way it was constructed in the earth bank for, for protection. Um, the Stanton, unlike the blast shelter, was um, was semi-buried. So it was was a couple of feet into the ground, and then it was it was almost entirely covered in in earth and stone. As you can see here, so we've got the the red brick blast um, blast wall at the entrance. Um, it's not a straight in entrance. Remember, it's it's um, it's about creating those those hard corners um, to try and to try and stop any blast wave um, getting into the shelter. And then yeah, covered with uh, stones and and earth. And if we come down, we can we can see the end. The end section of um, of concrete here and the and the emergency exit, uh, which is where we were just a few minutes ago down inside inside the area shelter. So I hope I hope you enjoyed that um, that video. As I say, I'm, I'm trying new things in the channel, um, a mix of of some drone footage of some immersive 360 degree video, which I must say I'm a I'm a huge fan of for these these sorts of tours and explorers. Um, and, and now trying to um, trying to add some audio commentary while I'm here um, adds a little bit of pressure because I can't I can't make too many mistakes. Um, so it's very very hard to edit over the audio because it, essentially I'd like to do um, one take videos. So start um, and walk right through without without any cuts. I think for the 360 um, the 360 experience that works best. So anyway, if you've if you've liked this video, um, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel where there will be almost certainly more military history content um, as the channel develops. Thanks for watching. As is often the way with these things, just as I was driving away from site, um, I noticed another, another little complex off the road. Um, this one not in quite as good condition. Um, yeah, so I've got a, I've got a building and a, an air raid shelter around here. Uh, you know similarities uh, from the other blocks with the uh, the concrete render a uh, couple of feet up the wall. Um, it looks like while the roof was collapsed here, it looks like there was um, the the corrugated asbestos sheeting on the roof as well, um, with with the the electric still in the ceiling. Not quite sure what this what this building was. There's no sign of. Of water or, or, or plumbing in it, and um, so probably not. Well, I spoke too soon. Um, so we have, yeah, what is a small toilet cubicle on this side, as well as um, what looks like a couple of urinals. 
uh, what would have been a couple of urinals on this side. So right, so we've got some, um, some toilets on that side, a uh, large room on the other side. Um, so let's, let's have a look around the rest of the site and see if this will, will give us any clues. Uh, large windows anyway. Still nothing, nothing very obvious. But, but one thing I'm, I'm possibly thinking of is maybe some, some sort of entertainment. Um, could be a small, a small nappy, perhaps the, the Navy Army Air Force Institute, um, set up really as a as a as a tuck shop and uh, to give a little, little bit of respite to people. But there's a there's you know there's a, there's a sizable concrete platform here. That would have held a building which would which would have been larger than the typical accommodation blocks. I'd suggest you know some sort of a, a group building, such as a, you know could have been a cookhouse. Um, although I don't, don't think that was a kitchen behind us. Uh, concrete plinth here, most likely for a uh, some sort of stove or heater to the room. So you know large large room with with heating. So, you know it, it plays into the. Um, plays into the theory that it, it, it was a group building, you know, and that, that, that concrete was all the way back. Um, looks like all the way all the way back to here. So yeah, sizable building um, with, with stove or heater in the middle of it. Uh, that's served by that, that small building with a couple of toilets and um, possibly a little, a little bar or shop. Um, if we come out, the, the only other substantial remains in this site is, is this Stanton shelter. Um, I prefer to the other one as a Stanton shelter um, because it, it seemed to use some precast um, precast pieces. But they aren't they weren't in the, in the previous shelter, if you, you look back at the video, they weren't the typical um, Stanton panels, um, which I only realised afterwards. But having a look in this one, we'll see when we get in um, the, the typical, the much larger, the wider um, precast Stanton panels. But this is a you know reasonably large entrance to the shelter. Uh, the blast wall is quite a distance from the wall of the um, or the entrance of the shelter which is unusual in itself but yeah if we if we go inside um these are you know having, having a look at the wall um around me these are are the typical stanton precast panels for the area shelters um, you know you, you can say it's the same same style as the other one uh, just those those panels maybe improvised locally manufactured uh, there is a, a a number some sort of marking with one of the panels here, whether that was as as part of the sort of construction manufacturing process, I'm not sure. Um, and it does look like if you see the if you see the, the tar running around the edges here on those joins, what that suggests is the, the outside of these blocks is um, is is possibly co coated in tar for just for waterproofing. As I say they would they would have been all covered in earth. Um, Coming, coming down, concrete floor. Uh, this is a, a, a much certainly a, a sizable structure. Um, but there is there's, there's something which I would, you know, I would probably say would be contemporary F. McCormick, C O M A C K. Um, looks like it's been it's been stuck on with some sort of, um, you know, maybe some sort of sealing tape or perhaps painted on, and that's just the way it's aged. But yeah, very interesting. Maybe somebody who constructed it or was maybe down here during an air raid. And the usual uh, emergency escape, which you can see from the outside as well. So yeah, certainly a nice, nice example of a, of a, of a good large Stanton shelter. Um, I'm just, just looking out for any other unique marks that may be about. Um, and yeah, certainly a, a much larger blast wall and entrance. Um, than, than is normally expected um, for these sort of shelters. Uh, perhaps it's a little bit larger, you know, maybe it is more of a, a larger group shelter um, and the entrance provides some sort of blast protection for those that couldn't fit inside for whatever uh, whatever this was, whatever this large building um, was. Unfortunately, the, out the outside is, is covered in undergrowth, so I can't, can't really get any closer, but you can, you can see there, hopefully, the, the emergency escape 
and you can see the black on it I was saying about the tar which may have covered but you can, you can certainly see there that there has been there has been tar painted on this um, around the, the emergency escape and just I don't know if you can make out in this camera but you can see the hinges uh, where the, the, the escape hatch would have been uh, would have been fitted but obviously it's no longer no longer fitted so yeah a little, little bit of a bonus um, from another one of the um, dispersed sites at RAF Chedworth um, so yeah hope you enjoy remember thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like this video and you'd like to see more content in the future bye bye